We all ready? Caitlin, ready to go? Ready to go? Hey, ready to, I mean, really, I'm saying in love, be quiet, please, before I freak out. Got lots to get through today. Mark your own, here we go. Our favorite student, good old Ann. Convert the following angles to radians. To convert to radians, you multiply by pi and you divide by 180 degrees. Oh, got a latecomer. So to go from, uh, it, it does say, leave your answer as an exact value in terms of pi. So if it had just said go to two decimal places, I would literally go 300 times my pi button divided by 180, and that's the answer in radians. It's 5.23 radians, but it said leave your answer as an exact value in terms of pi. So I'm going to go, this is 300 over 180 pi, but I'm going to reduce the fraction. What's 300 over 180? Now, you can reduce this manually. You can say, oh, divide by 10 and divide by 6 and all that stuff. Or, if you're clever, you may notice that you have a fraction button on your fancy schmancy graphing calculator. And you could go into your fraction button and you could go 300 fraction button 180. Oh, this is 5 pi by 3. One mark. B, it's going to be negative 120 times pi over 180, which is going to be negative 120 over 180 pi, which is going to be negative 120 fraction button 180, negative 2 pi by 3. Is that okay? Number two, it says convert the following angles to degrees. To go to degrees, you reverse the procedure. I multiply by 180 degrees over pi. And when I do that, yay, pi cancels. That's kind of cool. And I'll get 5 times 180 divided by 3. I'll get 5 times 180 divided by 3. Uh, how about 5 times 180 divided by 3? Three, uh, 300 degrees. Oh yeah, it's the same answer as A. Because A was 300 degrees, which became 5 pi by 3. 1A. 2A was 5 pi by 3, should be 300 degrees. Negative 4 pi by 5, again, I'm going to multiply by 180 over pi. Yay, the pi cancels. You guys okay? Brooke, you good? It can wait. Thank you, dear. It's going to be negative 4 times 180 divided by 5. Negative 4 pi by 5 is negative 144 degrees. Number 3 says for each of these, draw the angle in standard position and then state the reference angle. We're in radians. Jordan, my friend, what's the denominator of the fraction? I'm going to call this 4 pi by 4. I know it's pi, but I'm going to call it 4 pi by 4. And I guess 2 pi would be 8 pi by 4. 8 over 4 is 2. I could call this one up here uh, 2 pi by 4 because it's halfway to the 4. Ah, which means I could call this one here 6 pi by 4. Now why is that so handy? What angle did they give me, Connor? So 2 pi by 4, 4 pi by 4, all the way would be 6 pi by 4. You know what? I think your sketch is going to be, you're in quadrant 3, bottom left. That gets you one mark. Oh, and that also makes it fairly easy for me to figure out the reference angle. If this is 4 pi by 4 and the whole thing is 5 pi by 4, how much further did I go? A single pi by 4, reference angle by 4. B. So one mark for the sketch, having it in the right place. Quadrant 3, one mark for the reference angle. Negative, I'll make sure I go downwards this time, 2 pi by 3. So I'll call this negative 3 pi by 3. 
Usually when it's negative, just so I don't do, be dumb and go positive, I'll draw a little arrow or something to remind myself, go that way. Just I'm being paranoid. Uh, all the way around would be negative 6 pi by 3. Erica, what angle did they give me? What, you just read it. What angle did they give me? You do know. S say it again, please. You missed something in front of it. Negative. Okay, so the whole thing. Ready? Scene one, act one, and take two. Action. Erica, with authority and knowledge in your voice, what angle did they give me? Negative 2 pi by 3. Uh, this is negative 3 pi by 3. So I guess I need to break it into three chunks and take two of those chunks. Because if it's 3 pi by 3s and I want 2 pi by 3s, you know what? I think a single pi by 3 is about there. I think 2 pi by 3 is about, I've kind of divided this bottom into three chunks. Because it's 3 pi by 3 for the whole thing. So I think 2 pi by 3 is right about there. I'd be looking for a sketch in, again, the bottom left corner. So this right here is negative 2 pi by 3. Erica, we're going to come back. Ready, ready, ready? How far is this right to here? The whole thing. Thank you. So from here to here, how far? Negative 2 pi by 3. I'll help you out. From here to here, how far? Negative 3 pi by 3. Three. Here's the reference angle. How big is that? It's a single pi by 3. And we ditched the negative because reference angles are defined as positive. Awesome. Whew, you made it. I'll pick on someone else for a bit. C. Uh, 11 pi by 6 sketch. Again, Brooke, my angel, what's the denominator here? So I'm going to call it positive. So I'm going to go into positive. I'll call this... 6 pi by 6, I'll call this 12 pi by 6, because that's pi and 2 pi, but why not use a common denominator? Oh, I guess halfway to 6 would be 3 pi by 6. And now, Jake, I've just decided that each quarter is, it looks like, a 3 pi by 6, 6 pi by 6, 9 pi by 6, I'm spotting the pattern. Brooke, what angle did they give me? Go further. Go further. Go further. Stop there. Because what's all the way around? 12 pi by 6. So one mark if you're in uh, quadrant 4, bottom right. And not only that, I can tell you how big the reference angle is. If 12 pi by 6 is all the way around, and I've gone 11 pi by 6, what's left? A single pi by 6. 1 pi by 6. You don't have to put the 1 in front, but you can. D. Roy, what did they give me in D, my friend? Over what? So I'll call this 3 pi by 3, because that's pi. I'll call this 6 pi by 3. You know what? As soon as I wrote that, I went, what did they give me? I'm going to go more than all the way around. Because 6 pi by 3 is all the way around. What did they give me? So, 6 pi by 3. You know what? I think 7 pi by 3 is you know, right about there. Go one third of a half of a circle further. So one mark if you're in quadrant 1. And Roy, what would you get for the reference angle? I'll just call it pi by 3. You can't make me write the 1, but I would totally accept that. One mark. So on your test, you can definitely expect a little chart like this. I don't know if I'll give you four different ones, but probably. Okay. What's the trick? Use the common denominator. And with, yeah, you have to be a little bit clever, but you can break the, section, the circle up into the four sections fairly good. Reasonably good. Turn the page. Find one positive and one negative coterminal angle. How do I find coterminal angles in degrees? What did we add? Plus or minus what? 360. 
How am I going to find coterminal <coughs> angles in radians? What am I going to add? Not 360 degrees, but the same thing in radians. 2 pi. Okay? Except I'm going to be clever. Jordan, what's my denominator in A? 3. I'm going to add, folks, people talking, I'm going to add or subtract 2 pi, but I'm going to write my 2 pi like that. Why not use a common denominator right away? That's 2 pi. What's 4 pi by 3 plus 6 pi by 3? In your head. What's 4 pi by 3 plus 6 pi by 3? So 1 is 10 pi by 3. Let's also, it said 1 positive, 1 negative, so the negative is going to be minusing. What's 4 pi by 3? Take away 6 pi by 3. Those angles are the same as 4 pi by 3 in terms of where they end in the circle. They end on the same terminal arm, though coterminal. One mark for each of those. Question, Roy? It's a good question. Because I, I, this is where people haven't done homework, I think. Oh, the 3 didn't show up. Wow. OK. Now they're all back. OK, yes? 2 pi. OK, OK, hang on, that's OK. Guys back there, you done? Rosanna, you going to put your phone away? OK, looked like you were, but I'm hearing a lot of chatting. Again, to find a coterminal angle in degrees, you add 360. What we're saying is go around the circle, end up back where you started from, 360. Or in radians, 2 pi, except Make your life easy. Instead of using actually 2 pi, find the common denominator. What was the denominator? 3. So I'm adding 2 pi, but that's 6 over 3 pi. So then I can do it in my head. Is that OK? Yes? It's hard for me to understand what you're saying. So we're adding or subtracting 360 degrees, except I can't use degrees. Radians. So 360 degrees is 2 pi radians. So far, so good? Except, what's my denominator? 3. three. So instead of writing 2 pi, I wrote 6 over 3. That's still 2 pi. 6 divided by 3 is 2. I'm using a common denominator. You OK with that? So ready? Listen closely. 4 pi by 3 plus 6 pi by 3 is what? 10 pi by 3. 4 pi by 3, take away 6 pi by 3, is what? Those are coterminal angles. Let's do the next one. Brooke, what's my denominator here in B? So you know what? I'm going to add or subtract multiples of 2 pi, except instead of writing 2 pi, I'm going to write 14 over 7, because that's also 2. Right? We're using math 8 fractions, folks. Eight pi by seven is not two. I want to add two pi, okay? Except I'm going to be clever and find a common denominator. If there was a five, I would do that. If there was a nine, I would add that. Since there is a seven, I will add 14 pi by seven. That's two pi. Hey, what if there was a 4? I'd add 8 pi by 4. What if there was a 20? I'd add 40 pi by 20. Still 2 pi. Because that way, because to add fractions, Brooke, you have to have a common denominator anyways. Why not cleverly build one in right away? Because now, you ready? Negative 6 pi by 7 plus 14 pi by 7 is what? It's going to be negative 6 plus 14. Theta 1. 8 pi by 7, there's a coterminal angle. Negative 6 pi by 7, take away 14 pi by 7 is what? I think negative 20, right? 6 take away 14, negative 6 take away 14 is negative 20. That's a coterminal angle. There are more. Did anybody else come up with other stuff? Because you could go further in either direction, but most people don't, right? Also. Uh, not only would 8 pi by 7 work, uh, if you added 14 to get 22 pi by 7 would work. If you added 14 to get 36 pi by 7 would work, but usually kids take the easiest ones. 
Although I did have one kid one year who kept finding coterminal angles in the 10,000s and making me do the math because he thought it was funny. It was, but irritating. Okay, so one mark for each of those. So this question's out of four. And then I'm going to ask you to solve some trig equations. This is the cast rule. Except I'm not going to ask you to solve a trig equation in radians. I haven't practiced that with you. So you need to make sure your calculator is in degrees. Degrees. How do I solve a trig equation? First thing I do is a sketch, C, A, S, T. Kyla, which trig function did they give me in this question? I can't hear you. I think you're right. Sine. Was my answer negative or positive? So the only place that sine is negative is there and there. If you get that far, that gets you a half mark. Now I want to find the reference angle. How do I find the reference angle? The reference angle is going to be the inverse sine of 0 0.8090. The reference angle is going to be the inverse or shift sine of 0 0.8090. The reference angle is going to be 54 degrees. So that angle is 54 degrees, and that angle is 54 degrees. Here is theta 1. How big is theta 1? 180 plus 54, which is 234. Here is theta 2. How big is theta 2? It's going to be 360 minus 54. 304? 306? That's what I said. <clears throat> okay. So in terms of marks, if you got this 2 out of 2, otherwise half mark for getting the correct quadrant, half mark for the reference angle, half mark for theta 1, half mark for theta 2. B. B. Foster, which trig function did they give me in B? Cool. Negative or positive? Negative. So C, A, S, T. Cos is positive here and here, so cos is negative here and here. Half mark. Find the reference angle. The reference angle is going to be the shift cos, the inverse cos of 0.8988. Uh, 26 degrees. So that means this angle is 26 degrees and this angle is 26 degrees. Which means theta 1 is 180 minus 26 degrees, 154 degrees. And theta 2 is 180 plus 26 degrees, which I hope is 204 degrees. 206 degrees, that's right. C. C A S T. Brandon, which trig function did they give me, my friend? Negative or positive? Where is tan positive? All are positive there, and tan is positive there. Oh, this is going to be a diagonal one. Let's find the reference angle. It's going to be the inverse tangent of 0.7813. Thirty-eight degrees. So that means that angle is thirty-eight degrees and that angle is thirty-eight degrees. Looks like theta one, Brandon, is just thirty-eight degrees. It's its own reference angle. And theta two looks like it's going to be one eighty plus thirty-eight degrees, two hundred and eighteen degrees. Is that okay? 
Call in my friend, which trig function did they give me in part D? Cos, you say? Positive or negative? So uh, here and here. Let's find the reference angle. It's going to be the inverse cosine of 0 0.8090. going to be 36 degrees, which means this angle is 36 degrees and this angle is 36 degrees. Theta 1, I think, just is 36 degrees. And theta 2 is going to be 360 take away 36 degrees, which I hope is 324 degrees. Two marks. Can you give yourself a lovely score at the top of your quiz out of, count them, 24, please? So last day in lesson seven, here is what we added. We said that the period was okay. So last day, we talked about period change. We said, oh, we said that it turns out the period, how long one wave is, is not the number in front of the x. It's 2 pi divided by the number in front of the x. Or the number in front of the x was 2 pi divided by the period. I gave you some questions to try. Questions from the homework. Now is your chance to ask. Hmm. Then let's do our last lesson. What we want to look at in today's lesson is applications of trig functions. In particular, we're going to do some modeling. We're going to enter some data and then get our calculator to model a trig function. So here's, I pulled this actually from StatsCamp. This is the uh, number of hours of daylight observed in Trois-Rivières, Quebec how it varies over several days, okay? By the way, it's located at 72 degrees, 33 degrees west, and 46 degrees, 21 degrees north. Day zero represents December 31st. So we started day zero, December 31st, and we went all the way up to day 365. Part A says, enter the data into your graphing calculator. Hey, we've done this before. Let's go to our stat menu. Oh, hang on, first. You have to be in radians for this to work. Now, I think automatically, if you start entering the data and you tell your calculator that you think it's a trig function, your calculator will switch to radians. So you know what? Let's find out as an experiment. If you're still in degrees, leave it. I, this is, I, I need to find out if it does change or not. Go menu, stat, and let's enter this data. So I have day 0, 31. 59, 90, 120, 151, 181, 212, 243. Whoop, that's wrong, Mr. Duke. 243, 273, 304, 334, and 365. I'm guessing this is the first day of each month, but not every month is the same number of days, which is why the gaps aren't even. February is shorter, and etc. Got a graphic calculator here? Not in green space. Got a phone here? Yeah. Swap me. Double check, I have 13 data points, because it looks like we entered December twice, right? Uh, and then uh, 9.84, 9 this I'll type in very carefully. I don't want to get the decimals wrong. Two twelve is sixteen point oh two, fourteen point three nine, twelve point seven four. Nope, not six. Ah, double check my data really quickly. Looks good, looks good. I think I'm right. And when you've done entering your data, look up. Got an enter, Rach? 
Anybody need more time besides Justin? Oh, good. You guys can type faster than I can. So let's do our usual graph and graph one. Hey, what does that graph look like? Yeah, in fact, I suspect, it, to me, it looks like a negative cosine graph because it's that flipped over letter C. But your graphing calculator will automatically fit it to a sine graph. And the way it's going to do that is something I haven't yet talked about. So anyways, let's go calc. Brooke, what did you think this graph was? You were right. Say it again. So let's go arrow sideways. and Oh, F5. OK? Now, here is our template. Look up A, amplitude, sine B. The period is going to be 2 pi over B. What I haven't talked about, Sean, is this plus C right here, adding something to the x. Remember for the parabola, when you added or subtracted something inside the brackets that moved your parabola left and right? That moves the sine graph left and right. And that's why Brooke, even though it looks like a cosine graph, they've just slid the sine graph sideways so that it overlaps properly. Oh, and then uh, plus D, hey, there's my midline. The midline is 13.36. So let's copy this equation. F5, enter. And let's actually write this equation. So A said, draw a sketch of the scatter plot. It looked kind of like, uh, oh, you know what? If I hit draw right here, I can see it again. So boom, 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 boom it looks kind of like, right? I said draw a sketch. I didn't say graph it accurately because that's too many points. I don't want to waste time. And then B says, find the sinusoidal regression equation to fit the data. OK. Uh, sin so it's going to be y equals. What's A? 3 point, I'll go 5, 5. Sine bracket. B is 0.01, I'll go 0 0.0173. X plus, actually not plus, minus 1.40. close bracket, plus 13.36. Did I get that right? You guys have the advantage of having your calculator in front of you while you're writing. Mine vanishes every time. I got it right, Caitlin? The only thing, I, I don't like the letters. What are we graphing on the y-axis, this variable here? Um, how about uh, h for hours? of daylight. Point zero one seven three. And what are we graphing on the x-axis? Day, how about d for day? Minus 1.40 plus 13.36. That's the equation that describes the number of aver the average number of hours of daylight that this particular town gets. Okay. Let's interpret it. What's the amplitude? By the way, now the numbers are almost always just going to be yucky decimals. Suck it up and deal with it. That happens in nature. The universe isn't meant, doesn't always work out evenly. So what's the amplitude? Someone said it. They're right. What's the amplitude? OK, amplitude is. 3.55. What's the period? Well, the period is 2 pi over the number in front of the x, 0 0.0173, which is what? I'm kind of curious. 2 pi divided by 0 0.0173. It should be very close to 365, because I think it's 365 days in a year. And hey, we're a bit off because there's some noise in the data. This is real life data. And not every year is identical to the previous year. So 363.
What else do they want me to find? The midline equation. The midline equation, y equals 13.36. You put it face down in the appropriate blocks? Thank you. The midline equation, y equals 13.36. Do you see where that came from? By the way, not only is that the midline equation, that's also that's also the center of this graph. You know what? That's the average number of hours of daylight a year. Some days longer, some days shorter, but the midline would also be the average. It's kind of cool. Oh, and the last thing it said is the range. This is going to be the trickier part because the numbers, Connor, aren't nice. What's the amplitude? Connor, what's the amplitude? 3.5. Can you get your hand with me? Sorry? 3.5. What's the midline? So here's what this graph does. Just look up, everyone. Here is 13.36 right here. It goes down 3.55 from there, and it goes up 3.55 from there. The range is start in the middle, go down by that, that much, and start in the middle, go up by that much. So on my calculator, 13.36 minus 3.55. The range is going to be between 9.81 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 16.91. Sorry, Sean, I don't get nice numbers with real life data. But it's saying start in the middle, midline. Go down amplitude, go up amplitude. When we had nice numbers, we could do it in our head. Here, I got to use the calculator. What else could I ask? Uh, apparently, for some reason, I skipped part D. I went straight to part E. Given the data, approximately how many hours of daylight will there be on May 23rd, Victoria Day? OK, Rosanna, you with me? This is the 143rd day of the year. So go to your calculator, go to your stat menu. But if you copied it, go to your graph menu if you have the equation sitting there, and most of you will. Because we did say copy, enter. If you don't have the equation sitting there, let me know. Put the phone away, Sean, or is that Brooks? OK, good. OK. We all there? Uh, turn the equation on, so we've got to select it, F1, and hit draw. By the way, what you're seeing here is uh, shortest day of the year is a little bit before December 31st. Oh, December 21st. Days get longer, 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 longer. There's June 21st right there. Days get shorter, 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 shorter. What do we want to find? What does part E want me to find, Colin? <coughs> How many hours? That's a y value given. Keep going. Yeah. Hang on. Sorry. OK, so what you're all going to need to do is go menu into the run menu and change to radians. Are you in degrees? Yeah, change it to radians. And now you should be good. I was wondering if it would do it automatically. So my virtual calculator makes the change automatically. Uh, you'll have to remember. And I did that also on purpose because I wanted you to see the glitch. Oh, I got a weird straight line. That's your alarm bell saying, oh, forgot to change it. Is that OK? So did I get the graph now? Yeah. So menu, five, draw. Colin, what are they asking me to find? A y value given what? We're going to try it again without all the talking. Okay. Given what? Yep. So they gave me an x value, May 23rd. What day number is May 23rd? I told you. OK, 
Okay, it's the 143rd. So given the, here's what they're saying. On the 143rd day of the year, which is Victoria Day, I looked it up, um, how long, how many hours of daylight will it be? So we're going to use G solve, and we want to find a Y calculation. What's the X value? No. 140, I got to give it the date, 143. How the heck do I enter May 23rd? No way to do that, right? So how many hours of daylight will there be on Victoria Day in trois Rivières? 16.5? You, you have it in front of you. You need to practice this. You shouldn't be squinting at my screen. The whole point of you having your calculator, you need to learn where these functions are. You can't just follow along and watch passively. Right, Rachel? Right. 16.5, I think, if I round off properly. How about 16.47? F says, what day or days we'll have 16 hours of daylight. 16 hours, is that an X value or a Y value? Because I asked you to, is that an X value or a Y value? Um, you'll miss that joke someday. So they've given me a Y value, which means they want me to find an X value. So again, I'm gonna go G solve, but I'm gonna do an X calculation. What's the Y value? How many hours? So it looks like on day 129. Oh, but wait a minute. Can you see there's going to be another day where that works as well, right there? How can I find that one? What would make sense? Try going arrow sideways. Day 214 and day 129. On those two days, there's going to be 16 hours of daylight. Example two. The table below shows how the time of sunset in Saskatoon varies over several days. The times are from a 24-hour clock in hours, and day zero represents December 31st. Let's enter this data, so go to your stats menu, clear whatever data you have. And carefully, quickly enter this. So 0, 65, 80, 130, 172, 264. Mm -hmm. Eight pieces of data. And once you've done that, try graphing it and seeing if you can find a sinusoidal fit a model equation for it. Oh, it looks like a sine or cosine. Sine, looks sinusoidal. And also copy it into your graph menu. Is that okay? So uh, part A says, uh, find the equation. So here's my equation. Y equals 2.27. Y equals 2.27 sine bracket 0 0.0176 X minus 1.49. Close bracket, plus 19.2. Except I don't like using a Y or an X. What are we measuring on the Y axis here? Time or hours? You want to use T or H? 
Sorry? T? Okay. T equals 2.27 sine 0 0.0176. X is day number. Oh, how about D again for day number? Minus 1.49. There's my equation. That's the equation that ha describes how many hours of daylight Saskatoon gets on a given year. By the way, Saskatoon, further north or further south than Trois Rivières? How's your Canadian geography? Okay, Saskatoon, Saskatoon is going to be further north, which I suspect means it's going to have a much bigger range. Shorter days in the winter, longer days in the summer. Okay? Is that okay? B. State. <coughs> Folks? B. State the amplitude, period, midline equation, and range. Okay? Amplitude 2.27. We're good? See, it's the back row, and I moved you to the back, and now you guys are yakking away. No, deal with it. Period is going to be 2 pi over 0 0.0176. Can someone type that into the calculator? Tell me what, it should be close to 365 days, I think, because we're talking about days of the year. What is 2 pi divided by 0 0.0176? If you don't know where the pi is, it suggests someone hasn't been doing much of the homework lately. I hope so. So 357? Yeah, OK. Is that close to 365? Yep. Why isn't it bang on? Because in real life, you have noise in the data. There's, there's, there's variables, OK? Midline equation, y equals 19.2. There's my midline. And then the range. The range is going to be from the midline, from 19.2, down by the amplitude, 2.27. And from the midline, 19.2, up by the amplitude, 2.27. The range is going to be from the amplitude, 19.2, down by 2.27, 2.27, less than or equal to, y less than or equal to, and from the midline, up by 2.27, 21.47. So this is the time of sunset, not actually number of hours, not hours of daylight, the time of sunset. So it looks like, oh, the sun sets later in the summer, earlier in the winter, and it looks like the earliest the sun sets in Saskatoon is 1643, uh, 440, four, you know what? The earliest it sets is close to 5 p.m. because this is close to 1700 hours, which is 5 p.m. Sun goes down at 5 in Saskatoon in the winter. On what days does the sun go down the earliest? On what days does the sun go down the latest? How can I find that out? How can I find out what day the sun goes down the latest and the earliest? Sorry? Graph, graph it and then do what? Let's go graph. So menu, uh, 5, turn the graph on, draw, G-solve. Not y. Min and max. Right? Earliest is going to be where the min is. Uh, looks like the fourth day of, oh, January 4th. Oh, it says negative 4, so I don't want to include that one. Let's go forward to the next one. Uh, day 351.6. How much you want to bet that's around December 21st? So day 352. 
earliest. Day 352. Latest. Day. How would I find the latest? G solve max. Day 174. 173.6. I'd take 173 or 174. By the way, I happen to download this number days of the year. What was our answer for the earliest day? 300 and what? 352, day 352 is December the, make this a bit smaller, Mr. Duick. Come on. Come on. Day 352 is December the 18th, close to the 21st. What was the longest day? Day 174, where is this on the chart, is uh, June 23rd. Pretty close to what we expected. I can tell you totally care. Next page. Your homework, take home quiz, and then you can try these questions here. I only gave you a few and the answers are attached. Try every question, please. 